Hello my beautiful friends and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit different because I am going to talk about five things about the tarot that I wish I knew earlier and I feel like that these things are misconceptions about the tarot so I really wanted to address them and I hope it helps you but I also want to emphasize that I personally think and feel like that they are misconceptions. Maybe you have a different opinion on this and that is totally fine. I always emphasize in my readings and in my other videos and in my podcast that you should do what feels right for you and if you have another opinion on things and it doesn't resonate with you then that is totally fine you don't have to follow what i say or what any other person say if it does not feel right for you so if you have any other opinion on these things then let me know in the comment section down below also maybe you stumbled across other misconceptions like i don't know how to else like phrase them and maybe also other things you stumbled across on your own tarot journey then also feel free to let me know in the comment section down below and as always please give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you because it really helps me out a lot and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell which should be somewhere down here and yeah without further ado let's get right into today's video so the first misconception and also the biggest misconception about the tarot in my eyes is that people feel like or they think they have to be psychic in order to do the tarot or like being a medium or something like that and i want to debunk this right away because i know people they are no psychics or mediums but they are experts in letting like the cards speak to them so they are really good at telling stories and things but they don't categorize themselves as like being a psychic or a medium they don't even feel like they have any of these um, abilities but they still are amazing tarot readers so if you feel like you have no psychic abilities or something like that then you still can learn the tarot and you can still be really good at tarot because what i feel like is far more important is to build up a really strong connection to your tarot cards like working with them on a regular basis and really understand how they work and how they kind of give you the messages like you know if you work with them regularly you start to see the patterns and the messages that they want to show you or kind of you can connect experiences and situations from your own life also memories and people to the cards because you start to see patterns while you are doing the tarot like regularly let's say a specific card always shows up and you kind of experience similar things and you start to connect this card to your experiences right and i feel like if you even if you are not psychic you still can learn to speak or let the tarot cards speak to you like this and you also don't have to be a psychic to learn about numerology and symbolism and things and you can always dive deeper into other teachings like astrology and these kind of things and then start to make kind of a connection between all of them and that will influence your readings too but you don't have to be a psychic to study these things and connect them to your tarot readings if this makes sense and i'm just using kind of psychic as a synonym for like having these kind of abilities you know but let's say you want to interpret the ten of cups right then if you know a little bit about numerology and you know that ten is kind of a closure of something and you look at the scenery depicted on the ten of cups right then you can see that there is like this beautiful rainbow and there is this couple like happily living and being grateful for what they have and it's just this happy ending and being emotional fulfilled because when you think about the suit of cups and you know about the cups then you know it is linked to the element of water which represents emotions and intuition and things so you can kind of build up your story like this right and you know that there is a lot of gratitude coming with it so you can just interpret a tarot card like this and you don't have to have any psychic abilities to do so right you can build this up like i feel like you can just 
work with the tarot and as I said if you work with them on a regular basis you learn how they speak to you like what kind of messages they want to deliver to you you can totally learn to do so but that does not mean that you should never learn the tarot and never start learning the tarot if you want to because you are afraid that you are not psychic or people will not take you seriously or something like that because you can be a great reader without having like any psychic insights or abilities so yeah i just want to emphasize if you want to study the tarot or learn the tarot and you felt afraid because you feel like you don't have these abilities then you can totally do so like just go for it <laughs> and what i would recommend you is to keep a tarot journal and to write down like draw a card every single day and write down what kind of comes up to your mind and don't think about it like don't look into books or something just see what the card is telling you and i always tell these people when they ask me like and i will like debunk this misconception as well later on but i feel like people feel the need to study all the meanings first and if they don't match with the meanings from the books they have they feel kind of that they are no good tarot reader but the meanings that pop up into your head while you are doing the tarot and when you like freshly start to study the tarot are so important and that's why it's so important to keep a tarot journal because the meanings you connect to a card are important and they can be different from what the like original meanings are if this makes sense your intuition is important and it tells you something and you have different experiences you have different things you can connect to the cards so feel free to just attach another meaning to a card even if it's not written in any book yeah what i would recommend is draw a card regularly to build up this connection to your tarot deck and write down everything that pops up into your head and you can write down like what feeling comes up when you look at this card what can you see on the card is there anything that pops out to you immediately like for example in our ten of cups card the rainbow could be something that is really speaking out to you so write it down and yeah just everything that comes to your mind you can also write down any memories you can connect to the card or people you can kind of connect to the situation in the card just write everything down because it is so important when you keep studying the tarot and you can look back into your own dictionary of meanings you made. Yeah, this is really important, you guys. This is really the number one tip I can give you if you want to get a better tarot reader. And this is even if you are already doing the tarot for quite a long time, but you feel like you want to get better than and you are not doing this already then do a tarot journal because it is so helpful what i also like is when i do a daily card i keep drawing the same card every single day until i kind of learn the lesson from the card or i understand what the card wants to tell me so this is also something really helpful to kind of see certain patterns in your life and situations that the card wants to emphasize and they want to tell you like okay look deeper there's something you have to learn so this is really helpful you guys and i really love doing a tarot journal and what I can also recommend you, and I think it was in a Biddy Tarot class that I learned it, is to tell a little story about the scenery in the card. So what it is actually that you can see, like how many people are there, what is the scenery, is it outside, is it inside, um, like is it daytime, nighttime, what is it actually that you can see? And my friend, she told me that I'm really good at telling these little stories, which I feel like I'm not that good. But she was afraid to do the tarot, like doing tarot readings for friends or like for clients, because she felt like she's not good at doing these little stories or connecting the stories of the cards, basically. And I told her to just keep practicing with one card and then you will naturally be able to do this little storytelling of the patterns you see when there is like more cards like for example three cards or even more cards you will see these little stories and i feel like you will naturally start to get into flow what the cards want to tell you like this even though again if you have no you feel like you have no psychic abilities you can still learn like this you can still 
get a really powerful tarot reader that can help other people and maybe you just have a different reading style right because there is different reading styles there is like people who really connect on a like psychic level I would say I don't know how else to put it but there is also other readers that can kind of connect it to psychology and these kind of things you can just figure out your reading style while doing this and you don't have to feel like you have to have psychic abilities to be a good tarot reader because you have just something that no other reader has right so if you feel anxious to study the tarot because of that then please don't do so and yeah you are you can still be a great tarot reader right so let's talk about misconception number two because I know a lot of people that want to learn the tarot but they heard or they kind of feel like they have to memorize and remember every single keyword and interpretation for each of the tarot cards and in the Rider Waite tarot deck there is 78 cards so there is a lot you would have to learn and they feel like they have to memorize everything before they can even do a reading like even a one card or draw one card a day they feel like they are not ready if they cannot remember every single meaning of the card and i was one of them in the beginning as well you guys because i have a lot of virgo aspects in my birth horoscope so naturally i'm really interested in learning and studying different things i'm collecting knowledge in every way possible like i have journals i have folders with like knowledge i'm just collecting to just have it because i feel like maybe i can need it in the future i made flash cards for all of the tarot cards or for my astrology studies so i was one of them in the beginning as well and i felt like i have to know every single keyword first and i got so frustrated whenever i wanted to do a reading but i could not remember everything that was written in the books like you know all of these tarot books out there they have so many different meanings some of them are quite similar but from what i experienced a lot of the keywords are just different or they just build up and it is just not possible to learn all of them first so after four years of doing the tarot here is how i see it I feel like that if you know different interpretations and keywords from these like original meanings or from the books it is really helpful and I would not give up totally on studying them like you know there is people who tell you to only do tarot intuitively and you don't have to study the keywords at all which is fine if you feel like you want to do it like that way but from what I experience and how I kind of connect to it is that I feel like I want to study keywords because I think that like these interpretations and keywords have been passed on for generations and there's just so much knowledge and kind of experience in it that I don't want to give up totally on learning them. So this is just my way of doing it. Again, if you feel like you want to just read intuitively, then totally go for it and this is also fine but i kind of always connected to astrology because over time there has been certain aspects in a horoscope or constellations that can be linked to certain events you know that something like similar always happened over time and that's how i also see the tarot there are just certain cards they have been proven to depict a certain situation or a meaning over time that's why i just like to learn these original meanings or of experiences from other readers as well but i don't feel like that you have to know them all in the beginning before you can even do a tarot reading or even start to do the tarot and on the other hand i also feel like that only memorizing all of the meanings is not helpful at all so i feel like you have to find a little bit of a balance if you want to go with the keyword so i feel like tarot is a long life learning process and you can just build up like let's say you study one meaning for each card every single um, day or week or month or whatever feels right for you and you can learn so much over time and gain experience and then you can incorporate all of these experiences into your own readings and you will eventually see what a card means for you and then you can add individual meanings to them over time as well right you don't have to know everything before you start doing the tarot and that is what i also love about the tarot because i feel like that every single tarot reader 
has a personal and individual style of reading and can incorporate their own life experience and memories, which is enriching their readings and makes it interesting. And that way they can connect to people who need to hear these messages, you know, if this makes sense. So here's how I did it with kind of learning the tarot. So I basically studied the basic meanings of the cards. And as I said, I'm really interested in learning. So for me, it was not hard to sit down and just dive into the tarot and study a lot of the meanings. But as I said, if you maybe are a different type of learner, then feel free to maybe study one meaning of a card each day or each week or each month or whatever feels right for you. But start to apply the knowledge. Like I started to apply my knowledge right away. Just draw one card each day. I also studied about numerology and symbolism, but only so that I could put it into my readings, if this makes sense. Like basically I just studied what the numbers one to 10 mean. So like for example, one is a new beginning, four is about like being stable. Like when you think about a table, right? He has four legs. So this is kind of having this stable fundament. 10 is about this cycle that ends. I also studied the basics about the suits. So let's say the suit of wands is linked to the element fire and the suit of wands is all about about like your passion, your motivation, your purpose, what is driving you, like what is making you excited. Then the suit of pentacles is connected to the element earth. So the suit of pentacles is all about the material realm. So the things you can grab and see in your world, like money or things in general. The suit of cups is linked to the element water. So this is all about your emotions, your intuition. And the suit of swords is connected to the element air and it represents kind of the intellectual world like your thoughts um, yeah your intellect basically so you can kind of see where I'm going right by only knowing like a little bit about the suits about the elements about the numerology you can already interpret the minor arcana cards quite well right because as I said with like the ten of cups in the misconception number one you can kind of say okay it's a closure a happy ending we have the cups it's about emotions and feelings it's like being emotionally fulfilled and being somewhere where you're just happy and grateful for how things are basically. And that way you can just already study the minor arcana cards, like making these small connections and you don't have to memorize every single meaning. And after that, I kind of started to study the major arcana cards and I'm being honest, I'm still studying the major arcana cards because there are still cards that I cannot fully connect myself to. Like I cannot really find this connection to certain cards and that is okay because maybe like on my fool's journey, I just haven't met this card yet or I just didn't meet a situation where I can connect to this card yet. So as I said, tarot is a process of long life learning. So don't feel bad if you need more time to learn because I feel like you are every single day learning more about the tarot. You will see situations in your life that you can connect to the tarot and that way it will like naturally get easier to study the card. So you will start to see these things in your life and you can build up connections to the tarot and it will get easier. Just build up your knowledge day by day. So I feel like there is not really a right or wrong way of learning the tarot. Like maybe my way of learning is not really appealing to you or you cannot really learn like this and that is totally fine. I would recommend you to find also your own kind of learning pattern and do what feels right for you so you're not getting overwhelmed. But what I feel like is definitely important is to apply the knowledge right away because I feel like if you don't apply it, you feel like you are never ready. You feel like you have to learn more first. And then, as I said, trust me, you will never stop learning because tarot is a long life learning process. And with that, I don't mean that you should give tarot readings for clients like from the first day on. I feel like just practicing for yourself, like drawing, as I said, a card each day and seeing what you connect to it or like what you can read from it. Also, maybe if you can practice with a friend or someone who also wants to learn the tarot because this is really helpful. And maybe there is also a local or online tarot community that you can join. And I joined a tarot online community 
like I think one month ago after you see like four years I finally decided that I just want to connect to other people who are doing the tarot as well and I am learning so much you guys like I feel like I'm in the three of pentacles card I'm getting help from people who are more experienced because there are readers they have been doing the tarot for basically like their whole life and the way they interpret the tarot is giving me so much value as well and I can learn from it so this is so much fun and if you have the possibility then I can recommend you to join and by that I feel like you naturally will learn the tarot and it will get easier because you see that there is people maybe also um, they just started and you don't feel like you are alone on this path you know because I felt alone for quite a long time and now I feel like okay there's people who are also doing it like I can see them in real life I can learn from them I can connect with them so if this is something that helps you then please feel free to do so because for me it really helped a lot and I wish I did this earlier like participated in a community for tarot but yeah this is the second misconception I feel like so many people are afraid of or well, that's why people are afraid of learning the tarot so yeah I hope I debunked this one so let's talk about misconception number three and I kind of talked about it a little bit in the first two misconceptions because I feel like that there is this misconception that again you have to for first study every single keyword and interpretation of the cards and if you cannot remember what is written in a book then feeling frustrated, you know, and feeling not good enough as a tarot reader. And I'm kind of thinking how to put it, but I feel like also by that you are, as I said, silencing your own inner voice and kind of pushing your own interpretations back and not allowing them to flow into your reading or into your awareness, right? Because as I said, I got really upset when I could not remember a keyword from a card like that was written in the book and I just had something else popped up in my mind and I would check it like right away and I would be like, okay, this is not what is written in the book and I would be totally frustrated. So yeah, not recommended. Your intuitive messages that you get when you do a reading or when you look at a card are really important. Like I did not even give myself the chance to interpret a card the way I wanted it, right? I just right away um, silenced my own inner voice and my own intuition and my own interpretations. And I so wanted to match the meanings from the books that I saw. And this was until I actually started to do my tarot journal to write down and just allow myself to write out whatever comes to my mind and then kind of start to see, okay, I connect XYZ with this card and that was okay like I didn't feel the pressure to match the keywords from the books anymore because I also said it before but my life is different from maybe another tarot reader I have different experiences I have different memories and people I know and this influences my style of reading right I feel like this was such an important lesson to learn on my tarot journey to really allow myself to let my own voice and my own intuition speak through the cards even though it is not the general meaning or it does not represent the general meaning so your own interpretations are really important and they are what enriches your tarot reading because as i said you have a unique style of reading and this is so important because if everyone would read the same way it would just be totally boring right so let's debunk misconception number four right away because you don't need 20, 30 or 40 tarot decks or oracle card decks or whatever you feel happy like reading with um, to be a good tarot reader, not as a beginner, but also not if you are a more advanced reader. And in fact, I think that having like multiple decks as a beginner will make it even harder for you to learn and connect to your cards. Because as I said before, in my opinion, the most important thing is to build up this really strong connection with your tarot cards, with your deck, and to have this really strong bond with your cards, right? But if you have too many decks as a beginner and let's say one day you read with tarot deck A, the next day you choose deck 
B, the next day C, D, E and so on, then you will never be able to kind of fully understand the tarot deck and spend the time it needs to be understood if this makes sense. And I would definitely start with the Rider Waite tarot deck and I know there is like other reading systems out there as well like the Crowley for example but I would always recommend beginners to choose the Rider Waite tarot deck because I feel like it is just a really good foundation and you have this basic understanding and you can transfer your knowledge on other decks as well and Bihadi Life described it kind of in a similar way she said that the Rider Waite tarot is just this universal language and you can transfer it on your other like systems as well so yeah i would stick to one reading system in the beginning and as i said my system of choice is the rider weight tarot deck because i also feel like that there is so many free resources out there that you can just use to study it and again if you find another tarot deck and it is not based on the rider weight tarot but you still love it and you feel like you connect with it then please go for it because Again, the most important thing is that you have the connection to your tarot cards or oracle cards um, or whatever you want to do your reading with. So this is the most important thing and what works for me does not mean it works for you as well. And actually one girl wrote under my tarot deck collection video that all of my favorite decks are the total opposite of her decks because like I said it in this video but I'm really interested in history and kind of these original pictures and meanings of the Rider Waite tarot card and she said okay I'm like really into these modern and more like dreamy um, tarot decks like the quite opposite from what I like so if this is the case then definitely go for it because you have to at the end of the day being able to understand what the deck wants to tell you and if it is not the Rider Waite tarot deck that is totally fine this is just what I recommend people if they ask me what they should start with and of course I also bought other decks when I started to study the tarot just because of the fact that they were really beautiful and I think the tarot decks are a piece of art and I like to collect them but still i would always go back to my normal like rider weight tarot like the first deck i ever got and worked with it because i just had this connection with the stack and the other ones i just really liked because of the pictures of course now i'm starting to work with more decks because now i feel comfortable to do so but at the beginning i would really recommend to stick with one deck and to fully understand it and study it and i just want to emphasize one more thing because i feel like nowadays on youtube when you watch youtube tarot readings maybe you also watch my own tarot readings then it may seem like that we all have like tons of different tarot decks and oracle cards and maybe you also want to start a youtube channel or do tarot readings for yourself like for friends or like clients and you feel the need that you have to buy all of these decks then i feel like that you should still stick to like the decks you feel comfortable with because i feel like I would rather have a quality reading than over a quantity reading like it doesn't matter if there is like 10 decks in it but I don't understand what's going on it's not like um, resonating with my own life I cannot really use it for my life then again I would rather have one tarot deck instead of like 10 tarot decks and it looks really amazing and beautiful but I don't really get it so yeah i just wanted to say that because i feel like and even i had to learn it because i felt the need to buy all of these tarot decks to give you guys like some new fresh reading and make it look more beautiful but at the end i feel like when you guys can relate to a reading and you can use and extract something out from it then this is for me far more important than having all of these fancy cards and like every single reading use a different deck if this makes sense so yeah if you have been struggling with a similar thought then i hope this helps you so let's talk about misconception number five because i feel like that there is this misconception that there is only one right way to study and learn the tarot and I said it throughout the whole video but in my opinion the most important thing is that you are resonating with what you are doing when it comes to tarot that it makes you happy the way you do the tarot and it's not overwhelming right because I can tell you like a lot of things but if it does not resonate with you then there is no sense and you should always do what makes you feel happy and confident 
about the tarot. And I feel like that the beautiful thing about the tarot is that you will start to listen to your intuition. You will build up a system that resonates deep within you and that will tell you like, okay, this feels right for me. This feels wrong for me. I feel like you will naturally build up the system. And I wanted to address this misconception because a similar question came up at our last online tarot community meeting. And there was this woman and she said, okay, maybe for the more experienced tarot readers, how are you doing it? Because I read that before a reading, you should draw a card. And based on this card, basically you would choose if you want to keep going with the reading or you don't want to do the reading anymore. And she was asking like, okay, like, what do you think about this? What should I do? I'm kind of confused. It does not feel right while reading it. And we all said like, okay, you should listen what feels right to you. And basically you already answered your own question because you said it does not feel right to do so. She felt uncomfortable and that was the important thing, right? Because it was not the right thing for her to do. And that's what we all just confirmed to her. So at the end of the day, as I said, you have to be comfortable with what you are doing. And if you don't feel comfortable about what a book or a class or a YouTube video is telling you, then don't do it because you have to, at the end of the day, resonate with it and feel comfortable with it, right? And I just decided that I will give you a bonus misconception because I feel like that it really goes hand in hand about what we just talked about. And I feel like it is also important to address and maybe I will do a part two of the misconceptions or things I wish I knew about the tarot earlier, but I really wanted to address it because I feel like that there is also this misconception that you have to know all of these crazy 10 to 15 to 20 tarot card spreads to be a good tarot reader. I have been one of these people too. I thought I need to know all of these crazy spreads to be a good tarot reader, but I know people, they never do a tarot spread that has more than three to five tarot cards and they still get pretty accurate messages and readings from their cards. And even one tarot card can already give you like a huge powerful message. So I really want you to not be afraid to study them. I feel like you will naturally start to study them when you feel more comfortable. As I said, you will get better in storytelling. You will get better into like connecting the cards with meanings and remembering the keywords. And you will naturally start to be able to do bigger spreads with the tarot cards but don't feel the need that you have to be able to do like the celtic cross right from the beginning because you really don't have to and yeah i really wanted to address this because so many people ask me like oh my god do i have to know like this tarot card spread because i don't know i feel not comfortable relaxed no you don't have to and as i said you have to feel right and there will be a point where you are like okay I'm comfortable now with like reading one to three cards, maybe five cards. Now I feel ready to do a bigger spread and this time will come naturally, you guys. You don't have to stress, you don't have to rush. Everything will unfold like how it should be. So again, do what feels right for you and build up your tarot confidence over time. And yeah, when you feel like the time is right, try bigger spreads and just have fun with it, like experience with it because I also feel like the tarot is connected to this really like strong, I don't know how to put it, but it's like putting things in a box and not really having fun with it. And I really want people to have fun with the tarot and like just experience and do things that feels right for them because I don't know. This is just how I see the tarot. So these are the misconceptions or the things that I wish I knew about the tarot earlier. I really hope it helps you and I really hope that maybe it can decrease your fear of learning the tarot or like doing the next step with tarot a little bit. And again, if it was helpful for you, then please give this video a thumbs up because it really helps me out a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.